so good to see all of you tonight. Okay. Praise God for every one of you. I'm 72 years old. And I'm still in the Lord. But after joining you tonight, I'm 27 years old. Uh, I'm not even 25 How many of you older than 27 years old see your hands? Older than 27. Wow, so you are all my older brothers and sisters. Ah, welcome to the family. God bless all of you. Okay. Yeah, take a seat, take a seat. Time on, time on. Really, it's so good to be with all of you. It, it makes me feel so much younger. So I must come and join you all more often. Amen. Amen. Ah, it feels so, so good indeed. Okay. And I'm so delighted that Pastor Sarah is helping me tonight. She should take over the preaching and sit there and enjoy her sermon. What do you think? Uh, I think she makes a fantastic preacher. Uh, okay, thank amen. You, Pastor. Isn't it? So thank God for Pastor Sarah. Yeah. Well, tonight I'm going to speak about a life-changing encounter with Jesus. Amen. How many of you, your lives have been changed since you encountered Jesus? How many of you see hands? Wow, okay, fantastic. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Tonight, we're talk about one woman who encountered Jesus. And how her life has been totally changed and transformed. And therefore, this is taken from John chapter 4, verses 4 to 15. Alright, I'm going to ask Pastor Sarah to read, okay, for us in Myanmar. General, Myanmar, ยากุติมิมิตาโยตะอาเปโตมีกวัตอนิชมารินเนชุขาอมีชิโตมโยตะยอกโตมุอิโทอะเยนะยากุอิเยตวยชิเยชุติคะยิตวายเวเปมันโ
Let us pray. So, Damjaya. Our Father, we ask you by your Holy Spirit take your word and speak and challenge us. And draw us all in response, Father, I pray. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 How many of you, you have seen a buffalo in a field before? How many of you? Wow, great, wonderful. Well, once there was a farmer who brought his buffalo to town. And this farmer said to the people in the town, If any one of you can fulfill three wishes of mine, I'm going to present this buffalo as a, as a gift to you. So everybody in the town, they're very excited to want to have this buffalo as a gift. Well, said the farmer firstly, I want you to make my buffalo cry. Well, people pinch the buffalo, kick the buffalo. The, the buffalo did not cry at all. Then the pastor of the town came along. And the pastor said to the farmer, Can I try? The farmer said, of course, sir, you may. And so the pastor went to the buffalo, whispers in the buffalo, and the buffalo crying, crying, crying. Well, secondly, the farmer said, I want you to make my buffalo laugh now, laugh. And so people tickle the buffaloes, make funky monkey faces, buffalo did not laugh. But, but the pastor said, Can I try once more? Farmer said, of course you may. And the pastor, when the beef ear buffalo whispers, and the buffalo laugh and laugh and laugh like crazy. Well, thirdly, the farmer said, I want to make my buffalo run. People push the buffalo, drag the buffalo. The big strong buffalo did not move a single inch. Finally, the pastor said, Can I try one last time? The, the farmer said, Of course you may. And so the pastor went near the buffalo, whispered, and the buffalo bolted off. And well, the said, The farmer, this is amazing, pastor, you're an amazing person. Oh, and so. The farmer said to the pastor, What did you do to my buffalo? Before I present this buffalo to you, I want to know what you do to my buffalo. Well, said the pastor to the farmer, Firstly, I told your buffalo how hard I work as a pastor. I suppose your buffalo took pity on me and started to cry and cry and cry. Secondly, I told the buffalo how much salary I'm paid every month as a pastor. I suppose your buffalo thought this pastor works so hard how can he be paid so little? And the buffalo could and the buffalo laugh and laugh and laugh. Ah, the car and I will mean it. Come on, oh, joy, I'm in. I'm jide, jide, jide. The law, all of you, all of the law, leave it. Yeah, the whole Finally, said the pastor. No, now some to cook out. Thirdly, I told your buffalo. Me and joy, I'm not your lady. Now, do you want to be a pastor? And the buffalo ran away. Me lady, me and the house, yeah, pitch and all of me lady, the car and beat on a way. 
The buffalo don't want to be a pastor. How many want to be a pastor? You can act your hands. Wow, wow! I like that. I like all of you. Ah, uh, yeah. I love you. I like Pastor Sarah. I will both pastors. I really love being a pastor. Sorry. I love to be a pastor. In fact, I used to work as an engineer. I used to teach engineering at a college. I gave up my engineering. Right. Yeah. Um, to, to become a pastor. You know why it is so good to be a pastor? Because I meet some of the nicest people in the whole world, like all of you tonight. Amen. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 So friends, so good to be a pastor. Amen. Amen. So what a joy, blessing, privilege is for me to be with you all tonight. And this is where, friends, as a pastor, you and I can meet all kinds of people. But most important of for all of us, we all want to learn from Jesus how he goes about changing the lives of other people. Which is so important, isn't it? Be because I myself came from a Buddhist background. And I was struggling about the meaning of life. And, and out of that I became a Christian. At, at the age of 20 years old. It changed my life completely. And, and, yeah. And Jesus wants to do the same for every one of us. Amen. Amen. And so, how did Jesus change the life of this Samaritan woman? I think firstly, we notice fear for all of us in Jesus changing the lives of people. Firstly, friends, you and I see the posh of the heart of Jesus. Because here in John's Gospel, chapter 4, and in verse 4, it says to us like this. Now he, referring to Jesus, had to go through Samaria. Now Jesus went through Samaritan territory. Normally, a Jew would not go through Samaritan territory. A Jew, a Jew will always avoid going through Samaritan territory. Because Jews have got nothing to do with Samaritans. Jews look down upon Samaritans. But Jesus here shows to us that we should not look down on anybody. We should love anybody and everybody. Right. And really, I love all of you Myanmar people. Yeah. 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 Really. Really. You are such wonderful people. And you are also so gifted. So when you sing, for example, when you all sing, all the birds will fall in love with all of you. Be ah, amen. Yeah, because, because you all sing so well. Amen, isn't it? And so here is an example of Jesus who loves everybody. Even the Samaritan woman. So that's how, friends, it shows a portion of the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. That like Jesus, you and I must love anybody and everybody. Because, because everyone is important. Young or old. Like this boy coming up here on stage. This boy is loved by Jesus. Amen. 
So actually, I'm not disturbed if boys come up here and run around. I'm not disturbed. Because everyone is precious to Jesus. Amen. And therefore, and therefore, we must love anyone and everyone. Young or old. Rich or poor. Rich or poor. Educated or uneducated. It does not matter at all to Jesus. So we must have the same heart of Jesus like this for all of us. Amen. 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 Secondly, friends, the place of engagement for Jesus. Where did Jesus engage the Samaritan woman? And so verses 5 and 6 here, the Bible tells us in John chapter 4. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired his was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. So where did Jesus engage the Samaritan woman? It is there by the well. Why did Jesus go to the well? Because that's where everybody in the community will come to draw water from. And so therefore, that's a place, a great place to meet people. All kinds of people. So, where is your place of engagement? In your place of work, where you live, there are people around you. Amen, isn't it? Amen. And therefore, that's your place you should engage with people. So for me as a pastor, where do I engage people? Whenever I travel, that's a great time to engage people. For example, once I was flying from Kuala Lumpur here all the way to Moscow, Russia to speak at a conference. In a flight from Kuala Lumpur to, 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 to Dubai, there was a last passenger who came into the plane. He was, he was very muscular and strongly built by all, like all you Myanmar men. Very Amen. Uh, strong muscles. Ah, muscle in it. And muscular men, they like to wear sleeveless t shirts. To show their muscles. And so when it came into the plane, there's an empty seat next to where my wife and I are seated. So he worked his way into the empty seat. I was so very happy when he sat next to us. I told my wife, you sit, I'll sit, I'll sit next to him. And he was very unhappy, very upset. He said, what a lousy airline. I want a better city, the lousy city given to me. He was complaining all the time. After he quieted out a little bit, I say, Hi, my name is Daniel Ho. What's your name? He said, My name is Julian. He Julian. said, My name is Julian. Not happy to speak. I said, Julian, you're very special. Out, out, out of seven billion people, God take a pastor to sit next to you. So, so, right. so, so, you must be very special. 
you know what I found about Julian? Julian talking with him, Julian was eight to ten times old England karate champion. Julian karate champion. That's why he's so muscular. And he has got three children at that time. Daughter 26 years old. Son 21 years old. The third one son 19 years old. All three children are all old England karate champions in the age groups. I became very careful in talking with him. Because I one punch and my nose will fall off. I said, Julian, you know, it is so excellent. God put you sit next to a pastor. So I share with him Jesus. Halfway to the flight. 39,000 feet above sea level. Julian was in tears. Julian I told Julian, you know, Julian, God has touched you. And if you like to, if you like to, I want to lead you to trust in faith in Jesus Christ. Is it, is it okay? Is Julian, Julian looked up and said, okay, can. So it was my great joy, privilege to lead Julian to faith in Christ there. Okay, 39,000 feet above sea level. Yeah. So I told Julian, I said, Julian, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I so even world karate champion in cry one. Oh, karate champion Yeah. Like the buffalo can also cry one. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Because you are, if you are touched by God, we will all cry. <laughs> Amen, isn't it? And so, it is so important for us to seize opportunities to engage with people wherever God has put us in. Now, what is the point of Jesus' conversation now with this Samaritan woman? Here in verse 7, John 4, it tells us like this. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? So how did Jesus engage her? She woman comes for water. Jesus also comes for water. Because he was thirsty. And so therefore, friends, the common point of conversation is about water, isn't it? It's a natural way to connect with people. And so therefore, for all of you, what is your common point of conversation? For those of you holding a job there in your place of work, just talk about work. Ask your colleague or your friend, for example, in the same workplace, what is it you like about working here? Then your colleague will share, then after you share also. 
then turn it around. What is one challenge you face working here? Do we have challenges in our workplace? How many of you face challenges? Yeah, we face all kinds of challenges. Isn't it? So therefore, ask your friend, what is one challenge you face working here? Let, let your friend share. Then after that, you share with your friend the challenge you face there in a place of work. See, when we face with a challenge, we all pray and pray very hard, isn't it? Amen, isn't Amen. it? And because of them, because of our prayer, God helps us in our work, isn't it? So that's why you share with your friend how God has helped you because you prayed and God helped you in your work. And you tell your friend, I pray because I'm a Christian, I believe in this God who will help me. Amen, isn't it? Not only then you can ask your friend, by the way, are you a Christian? And if it's not a Christian, that's why you can share your faith in Jesus with your friend. Because knowing Jesus is so very good, isn't it? Amen, isn't it? Amen, isn't it? Which is so important for all of us. Or oh, sometimes you can talk about your health. Say, for example, you say to your friend, okay, at the workplace, you look very healthy and strong. What do you do to keep fit, healthy and strong? Then he shares after that, you also share. Then turn it around. Uh, Ask your friend. Have you ever faced a health challenge in your life? We all do face health challenges, isn't it? How many of you have faced a health challenge in your life? See your hands. Okay. Yeah, isn't it? So many of us, we all have health challenges. I got a health challenge as well. See, when I was 13, 14 years old, I started to have joint pains in my joints. And, and it became worse and worse. And, some, and sometimes my big joints, like shoulder, like my knees, will be in so much pain that sometimes I cannot move. And the English word for it is called arthritis. How many of you know about this pain? Pain in the joints. How many of you can you know this? Yeah, and this arthritis pain, as you grow older, it will get worse and worse only. It will not get better and better. And I've seen some older people with arthritis. And they're all frozen in the bed, couldn't move anymore. Which is so sad, isn't it? So I struggled for over 20 years with my arthritis pain. And some days I can't take off my shirt because I was in great pain. I put on my shirt because I was in great pain. Then in 1986, I went full time to serve God. Uh, I said, God, I want to go all out to serve you. And I said, I want to go all Touch my life and heal me of my arthritis. So that I can go all out to serve you. You know, you know, friends, God healed me of my arthritis. Today, no more pain. Today, I run and run up the mountain. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? And, and I carry weights as well. Yeah, so, 
Some of you here, you see me going to the gym regularly every day. So that together we can carry on serving God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So our God is a very good God. And this way, you, this way you and I can share with our friends. How, how this God can help us in our health. Can help us in our work. Can, can also help us in our studies. How many of you are students you study? Can I see your hands? Okay, a few of you, including Pastor Sarah. Okay, Sarah about now, me. That, that was a student who came from China. She did her first degree in China. Then she came to Malaysia to do her master's program. Because all her education in China were all in Mandarin. But now coming to Malaysia, she has learned everything in English. And how difficult is the master's program? Like what Pastor Sarah is going through, isn't it? But she's a smart lady, no problem for her. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. And so this lady from China, she struggled with English. She studied very hard to try to get through her exam. The day before she went into for her exam paper, middle of the night she had a dream. And in her dream, she saw the exam paper the next day. So she got, up in, she got up quickly and started studying through the whole night. And next day when she went to exam hall, it was exact paper she saw in her dream. Wow. How many of you, you like dreams like that? See your hands. Wow, all you clever Myanmar people. Yeah. Yeah. God is very merciful towards her. That shows how real God is towards all of us. Amen. 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 And so what happens is that in the point of conversation, Jesus came to a top of water. For you and I, it could be our work. It could be our health. It could be our studies. So there's so many things we can talk about with our friends, our colleagues. But you see, when Jesus talked to her about water, immediately what happens? There's a prejudice of this Samaritan woman. What, what did the Samaritan woman say? John chapter 4, verse 9. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. immediately, the Samaritan woman said, no, we got nothing to do with each other. Now, sometimes when you meet with your friends, sometimes you tell your friend, I'm a Christian. I mean, you may ask your friend, are you a Christian? Sometimes that person, hm, just like that. Anyone, anyone of your face that? Anybody huh? will face that? Sometimes they talk about Jesus, what a, hmm, shut it down. Sometimes it could be your own father. Am I right? Right or not? Uh, not? Not mothers, fathers only got problem. Yeah, sometimes you tell daddy, papa, okay, about Jesus, hmm, they'll shut you down. 
It could be your boss. Hmm, don't don't talk. The tail of Jim Pian and Lama Bione. You know how to tackle people like this? Firstly, you apologize to that person. You say to that person, could be your own father. Say, Dad, I'm so sorry what I said offended or hurt you. And then secondly, say to your father, Dad, if you don't mind, help me to understand. Why you get so hurt or offended when the name of Jesus is mentioned? Because there's always a reason behind it. When, when people are hurt, there's always a reason behind it. Am I right? Sometimes, sometimes it's because they got a bad experience with Christians. And they say, hmm, don't, don't, don't talk anymore. But we will say, I will say to a person like this, you got a bad experience with these Christians. These are not so good Christians. These are bad apples. There are many good Christians, many good apples you have, they were not met. And they are all found in Myanmar church here in DMC. Right now. So you tell your friend. Okay, these are some bad apples, bad Christians. Come to my church, GMC. Okay, so, Myanmar church, all good apples, all good ones. Amen. 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 Amen, isn't it? So therefore, we must not allow their hurt to stop them from considering Jesus. Like, like this man, for example, I went to the house. Our golden club here for people above 60 years old, they had the anniversary celebration in the house here in PJ. You were a ministry, ma. She did Ludia anniversary. She did the town general in Mutuare. The lady who is a Christian opened up the house. Any Enga, a Mutamia, two Engu Pimbe, not the anniversary Lopo Yandra. But the husband is not a Christian. Dabe, Yau Jaga cream, ho. So that night after that wonderful celebration in the house, I asked the lady in the house, Is your husband home? General Mede. I said, yes, he's upstairs. He refused to join all the Christians downstairs because he's not a Christian. I said, can I meet with him and say hello to him and thank him? She said, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. At, at that time, the daughter was back from England or from Scotland doing her PhD. And your daughter said, no, 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 no. I said, don't worry, I'm not going to share Jesus with your father. I just want to thank your father only. And she, and she says, sure not, Pastor. I said, sure one. So the daughter went upstairs and, 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 talked to, and, and talked to the papa. Papa, someone passed on to talk to you. And then after the daughter came downstairs, and the daughter said to me like this as she walked downstairs. She, she said, Pastor, Pastor, my father coming, my father coming. I thought, what kind of man am I going to meet now? <laughs> so I saw him walking down the staircase. <laughs> Before he hit the last step there, I reached out my hand to him. I, I said, hello, Mr. Wong, I'm Pastor Daniel Ho. Mr. Wong, Daniel Ho. For the next 25 minutes, 
He attacked me left, right, and center. I mean, not with his hands. But with his mouth. Okay, on and on and on, attacking me with all the words. And very nasty words. I said, Mr. Wong, looks like you've been hurt by some Christians. Mr. Wong, come here. I don't know who these Christians are who hurt you. Mr. Wong, on their behalf, can I apologize to you to say sorry? You know, you know me, what, okay. You know what Mr. Wong said to me? Mr. Wong said, none of your business. I I was shocked. I apologize to him. He said, he said, none of your business. I said, no, no, Mr. You know, I'm a pastor. A good, a pastor. A good pastor from DMC like Pastor Sarah like that. Oh, you know, DMC like a good pastor from DMC like Pastor Sarah like that. So on behalf of these not so good Christians, I apologize to you lah. Then he come down a little bit. And then as we were leave, as I was leaving the house, he tapped me on my shoulder. He said, "Thanks for coming." I couldn't believe what I heard. Before that, he was scolding me like crazy. Now he thanked me for coming. Wow. Okay. Yeah, God is good. For 11 months, I worked and worked, worked on Mr. Wong. And eleven months later, I led Mr. Wong to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then he started coming to DMC now. But but he will not go inside the church to join for worship. He will sit outside and watch on closed circuit television. But then slowly, slowly over the months, he start going inside and join all of us in worship. Yeah. Then later on, the daughter finished her PhD, came back and worked. And then got married. And for several years, the daughter Pui and her son-in-law were trying to have baby. And they, and they couldn't have babies. So one day I was preaching in DMC. I said, today I want to pray for those who want to have babies but could not have babies. So, several couples came up for prayer. And I saw Mr. Wong's daughter, Pui, and the son-in-law standing there. And, and soon after I preaching, I walked down and prayed for Pui and Derek. I said to them, this time next year, God is going to give you a child. And indeed, one year later, they got a baby, Elizabeth. And today, today Elizabeth is five years old. So I, I spoke to Mr. Wong. I said, Mr. Wong, you know how you talked to me last time? Mr. Wong, you know what? Come here, you know, you're okay. Let me see that. I said, you're so rude and nasty. No, the eight door, I am, you know, go, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. He said, am I that bad? I said, you're terrible. Ah, thanks for that, boy. I said, Mr. Wong, should thank me for life. Yeah, Mr. Wong, come here, you know, Jesus, the long thing, then, you know. Not only I lead you to faith in Jesus Christ. Come here, you know, Jesus, you're calling me, you know, come here, 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 you know
God is good. God is good. Amen, isn't it? Yeah. And so therefore, a lot of people don't know how good this God is. He wants to bless all of us. When, when we call upon Him, He wants to answer our prayers. Therefore, yeah, therefore tell your friends, don't miss out on this good God who wants to bless us. And that's what Jesus is trying to do to help this Samaritan woman. To overcome her prejudice. Jesus' purpose came for her to deliver her from the prejudice. And so what happened? Jesus makes a promise to her. And so in verse 10, Jesus says like this, if, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him here, given you living water. So Jesus said to Samaritan, you come here for physical water. But I've got something better for you. I offer you living water. Water that will not only quench your physical thirst. Water that will satisfy you forever and ever. And this is what Jesus promises for all of us. Amen, isn't it? That, that when we come to Him, He will satisfy all our needs. Yeah. He will satisfy all the desires of our heart. He will remove all fears and anxieties from us. As I told you, I came from a Buddhist background. When I was a young little boy, 8, 9, 10 years old, you know what I'm very fearful about? I'm always fearful about seeing a dead body. I'm really, I'm really frightened and scared. How many of you are afraid of seeing dead bodies see your hands? Oh, no one here. You're Myanmar, very brave people. Wow, fantastic, all of you, wonderful people. But when I was a young boy, I was very afraid to see dead bodies. I will try to run away as quickly as possible. But since coming to faith in Jesus Christ, He has delivered me from all these fears. Amen, isn't it? Amen. That whatever fears we've got, Jesus will take it away from us. Because Jesus wants to replace it with something better. He will replace with confidence, hope, and future. Amen. Isn't Amen. It? That's a joy and a blessing of knowing Jesus. So, so Jesus made this offer to Samaritan woman. You come for physical water. But I've got living water for you that will quench you forever and ever. And now, and now what happens to the woman? The plea of this Samaritan woman. Now what did she say and she respond? The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and keep coming here to draw water. So 
suddenly she realized what Jesus offers is so very good. Yeah, Jesus, I want it. I long for it. Because he wants to give all the good things for us in our lives. So that fear is removed and faith comes into the picture. Amen, isn't it? So that worry is gone and confidence comes in. So that hopelessness is gone and hope for the future comes into Jesus. So that as Christians, we always reach on the victorious side. Amen. Amen. And so this is the blessing you and I have, therefore. And so therefore, encountering Jesus is so good. What happened to this Samaritan woman? What are the results of Jesus' ministry there? Firstly, friends, for this Samaritan woman, she is no longer ashamed of her past. And so verses 20, 29, this is what it says to us like this. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? What did this woman do? Because after talking, after Jesus talked with the woman, Jesus said to the woman, go and call your husband. What did the woman say to Jesus? I have no husband. Jesus said, correct, you have no husband. Actually, you already have had five husbands. And the one you have is not your husband. So what you said, no husband, correct. But you already have five already. The present one, not yours. So what you say is true. Now sometimes we tend to think this woman must be a terrible woman. So immoral. Five husbands are chukup lagi. Still want one more. No, <laughs> This is not a good woman. Not true. Not true. You see, in those days, women are dependent on their husbands for support and security. Because women in those days are not like women from Myanmar today. Myanmar women today, very smart, very clever. And also very successful. God, man, no man doesn't matter one. Men, man, women can survive one. Men, women are very independent. So it doesn't matter if she is married or not. Amen. Men, women, amen. But not like in the early days. In the early days, women are dependent upon men for support and security. And the sad thing for this Samaritan woman is this. One first man married her and dumped her. Took advantage and then dumped her. 
target. Second man came along, married her, and then dumped her. Do they have to go to Jure and target? And then third man, fourth man, and fifth man. Lutiya pitiya, tomiya leya ngaya. All five men who were her husbands brought took advantage of her and misused her. They have pitiya Jure to go to target. And so, friends, it is not that this woman is immoral. It is the men who are immoral. <laughs> so, men, so men, not so good, ah. Yeah, you know, it was a man who unfortunately took advantage of her. So it's not the woman who's immoral, it's the men who are immoral. And, and so this poor woman suffered so much. And therefore, everybody in the community know this woman has six men already. And therefore, she has got a bad reputation. But you see, after she encountered Jesus, now she goes back to her own community. And she's happy to tell everyone that this man Jesus told me everything I ever did in the past. Including the six men I've got. She is no longer ashamed of her past. And that's what Jesus does for all of us in our lives. Amen. Amen. When Jesus steps into our life, we don't have to be ashamed anymore of our past. Whatever wrongs we do, any terrible things we do, the blood of Jesus wash it all clean. So we become a new creation, a new person in Jesus Christ. So that, so that our past is gone. And we start with a new beginning. Amen. For example, actually, I came originally from a very poor family. After my secondary school education, I could not go to university. Because the family was too poor to send me to university. So I have to stay back to work for four years. Before, before I had a break and went to England to do my engineering. And that's all by God's grace. But, but, but I'm so thankful and proud from the poor background I came from. Because throughout the secondary school days, we all amongst brothers and sisters have to work hard together. You know how many brothers and sisters I have? I've got three brothers and three sisters. So plus me, seven of us. We all came from Buddhist background. And it is out of that struggle I came to faith in Christ. And I begin to share. I begin to share with my parents and brothers and sisters. And slowly, one by one, I led them to faith in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So, this God is a very good God. Yeah. And before my mother passed away, she is very proud to become a Christian. And on top, on top, wherever she goes, she will ask Christians. You know that Daniel Ho, another pastor. Daniel Ho, sorry, And she will tell everyone, they want my son and my son. Yeah. 
That's what happens to us when Jesus comes to our life. Shame is all gone. We a new person in Christ. Amen. 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 So we don't have a shame anymore of the past. Like this Samaritan woman. And then what happens to the woman? She became an evangelist to people in her town. And so, verse 39 says, Many of the Samaritans from that time believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Amen. So many came to faith in Christ because of her. And this is amazing. And then further, what happens? Many in the town came to know Jesus as their Savior. Because verses 40, 41, it tells us like this. So when the Samaritans came to him, came to Jesus, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. And so to that one woman, many came to faith in Jesus Christ. So, women very powerful. Amen. Yeah, just to her, she touched the whole town. And so what happens? She impacted the whole town, but revival to the town. And this is what verse 42 tells us. Verse 42 says like this to us. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know this man really is the savior of the world. So imagine friends, to that one woman, she shocked the, everybody rocked the whole town and everyone came to faith and revival broke out. Amen. So never underestimate one person you touch. You never know to that one person who you touch, you never know what can happen. So that's why everyone is important. Every one of you is valuable. Every one of you. Yeah. Every one of you is precious to God. Amen. And so let's go all out to change the world for Jesus. Amen. We are here to touch and change the world for Jesus Christ. And therefore, this is my final challenge to all of you. What is the final challenge I want to give to all of you? Uh, which is this. That by the grace of God in the power of the Holy Spirit, I would like to lead how many persons or persons of faith in Christ in 2023 and make this an annual goal. Amen. 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 So I want to issue this challenge to every one of us. Set a number in the blank there as to how many persons. Take, take for example, if every one of you here were to lead one to faith in Christ this year, everyone just one to faith in Christ this year, what happens to your Myanmar church? Amen. 
There will be, not be enough seats here in the church for all of you. And if every year you just lead one to faith in Christ, the Myanmar church will double every year. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask you, set a number. Because, because I set a number for myself. See, when our senior pastor of DUMC here, you know what number I set for myself? That in one year, I want to lead 50 people to faith in Christ. 50 people is about one a week. I'm already working as senior pastor. I'm so busy. You know why I set that number still for myself? To remind me, every person is important. Because sometimes we can get so busy with church work. No time for people, no time for individuals. And sometimes the devil wants that. The devil wants to keep all of us very busy. And never end up leading people to faith in Christ. So the church is going, just working through the motion only. Everybody busy here and there. But no new people added to the church. So this has been my burden. All across the world, I speak like that. I challenge every Christian. All of, us must, all of us must lead at least one person to faith in Christ a year. The church will never be the same again. And the world will never be the same again. Let me close with this. Okay, see how good you are. See, for example, if I start a church all over again, I'm going to start a church like this. First year, I did one to faith in Christ. I, I discipled the person nicely. Then next year, two of us, each one of us, lead one to faith in Christ. How many people now? Four, am I right? So now I disciple all three. Then following year, the four of us, we go out and each one of us lead one to faith in Christ. How many now? How many now? Eight. Eight of us, isn't it? So starting first year, two, second year, four, third year, eight, fourth year, 16, fifth year, 32, sixth year, 64, right, seventh year, 128, okay, eighth year, 256. Okay, ninth year. If we just go on like this, how many years will it take to win a world of 8 billion people to faith in Christ today? You know, today is the worst population is 8 billion, you know that? So, so if you do like that every year each one of us leading one to faith in Christ a year how many years will it take to win a world of 8 billion people to faith in Christ anyone of you can tell me the answer if you know the answer, there will be free supper with Pastor Sarah tonight. <laughs> Anyone here? I ask this question all over the world. I preach in 40 countries in all six continents. 
I preached in Australia, New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand All across Asia. Across Africa. Africa Across Europe and UK. Europe the UK Across North America and South America. South America and North America I preach all over the world. I ask you the same question. How many years will it take to win a world of eight billion people to faith in Christ? Just by winning one by one to faith in Christ. From two, from two to four, four to eight, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, like this. How many years will it take? Anyone can tell me? I asked this question around the world. One young man in China gave me the answer. This young Chinese man, very clever. He worked out in his mind. In 20 seconds, he put up his hand and said, Pastor Daniel, when you hit 30 years, when you touch 30 years, you reach 1 billion people. 1 billion dollars. 31 years. You reach 2 billion. 2 billion. 32 years. You reach 4 billion. 4 billion. 33 years. 8 billion. 10 billion. Friends, just by starting with yourself. In 33 years, you can change the whole world. You know that? Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 9, the harvest is plentiful. Jesus also says to us in John chapter 4, and in verse 35, do not say four months more and then the harvest. Jesus says, open your eyes and look at the fields. It is ripe for harvest. So Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful in Matthew 9. And Jesus says the harvest is ripe in, in John chapter 4. So harvest, so harvest is plentiful and harvest is ripe. Jesus says it 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years later, we are far, far from finishing the job. You know, one day when we see Jesus, you, you and I have to come before him to ask for forgiveness and repent before him. Because we are not doing what we should be doing. Sh sharing Jesus and leading people to faith in Christ. Be because if we are not doing that, then what are we here for? Because if knowing Jesus is so good, how come we don't share one? Friends, we've got the best product in the whole world. The gospel of Jesus Christ can change our lives. How many of you, your lives has been changed in come to Jesus? Yeah. Isn't it? So we got the best product that can change lives. We not only got the best product, we got the most important product. Because this gospel of Christ not only will change our lives, will produce everlasting life. No, yeah, no product can change our lives, no product can give us everlasting life. Except the gospel of Jesus Christ. So my friends, let's go all out to share Jesus. So people never be the same again. 
so that people will never be the same again. Amen. 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 Since you're such a good audience, such a good, I wouldn't give you one last story. No, you know, the no, they can't let you repeat it. You know, now song people need to cook your dinner. Over Christmas last year, my family and I were in Singapore. Manika Christmas ma, you know, you know, meet us was Singapore ma, pite. Then one one day, the next day, there's a knock on our door. No, you know, row yet the car will love you. No name, ma, how jar. I opened the door. You know, the car pull like that. And there's hotel cleaner wanting to clean our room. You know, row yet hotel can go. And Indian lady. India, my old mother, she said. So I told my wife Doris in the room, let her come in to clean the room. And I said, no, no, my old mother, my old mother, my old mother, my old mother, she said, let her come in. And when she cleaned him to clean our room, I said to her, thank you so much for cleaning our room. Thank you so much for cleaning our room. I said to her, thank you so much for cleaning our room. 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 Jesus de mare dipa. My name is Daniel and my wife Doris. Chono na me Daniel ba, chono is near Doris ba. Dipa, I'm a pastor from Malaysia. Dipa ti la, chono ga Malaysia ga tenyo siya ba. You are very special. Chono tu pyo kham ya ayan thu ja de lu be. God God send you to clean the room of a pastor. Sphia de kham ya kham ya o pastor ye kham o tan shin lu khun be de. You so must so you must be very special. Ting ga ayan o thu ja de lu phit lo ni ma. In talking with Deepa, Deepa, ne jono pyo ye ne. She's actually from Malaysia. Tu ka Malaysia ka pye ne. She's a single mother. Tu a no single mother pye de. She's got four children. Tu ma kali li yao shi ne. She and husband divorced already. Yao cha ne kui ne. Husband takes care of two children. Kali li ne yao gu yao cha thai ne. She takes care of two other children. Tu a ne yao gu thai ne. And she will come in every day to Singapore to work and go back. And she comes on a motorbike at 4 a.m. in the morning to go to Singapore to work. She has to leave so early to beat the traffic jam because 200,000 Malaysians every day go into Singapore to work. 200,000. And then at 5 p.m. she gets on the motorbike to go back to Malaysia. It takes her two hours to cross, okay, because of huge traffic back to Malaysia. Malaysia so every morning, 4 a.m., she has to go to work. 5 p.m., she goes back two hours to get through the traffic to go home. Six days a week, she works like this. And she says, I have to work so hard to bring money in to support my children. I said to Deepa, God knows who you are and He loves you. He knows the struggles and pains in your life. And God has sent a pastor to let you know Jesus loves you. I led her to faith in Christ. And she was so grateful. After I left her faith in Christ, she bowed over and she came and touched my feet. And then she walked over to Auntie Doris. She bent over and touched her feet as well. That is her way, the Hindu Indian way honoring people they respect and love. But here is a woman who struggles all through life. So when, I let her to, so when I led her to faith in Christ, at, at 5 p.m. I was going out with the family for dinner. I saw Deepa getting on a motorbike. She put a helmet on. I say, hello, Deepa. Hello, Deepa. She was smiling away. 
I believe for a long, long time she was having heartache and pain in her life. But now we've been touched by Jesus. She could smile all the time. Give glory to Jesus. Amen. Give glory to Jesus. Come, let's stand together. I want to pray for grace and God's anointing upon all our lives. We all raise our hands to God. Set a number. As I say, I want to pray for all of you. How many are you going to lead to faith in Christ? And so now what happens is since I stepped down as senior pastor, that I want to I want to lead 24 people to faith in Christ every year. So last year, how many have I led to faith in Christ? I led 23 people to faith in Christ. So one shot of my target. So I ask you to pray for me. That this year I'll do a bit better. Right. I just got back from China. I let two people the faith in Christ in China. Yeah. In my limited Mandarin. Although I'm Chinese, I don't speak much Mandarin. Uh, because I'm, I'm not fully Chinese. Uh, but never mind, God wants to help all of us. Amen. Come, let me pray for all of you. Father, I bring all my brothers and sisters here to you. Release your grace anointing upon everyone. And Lord, in the numbers you have set in their minds. So set the number, my friends, I challenge you. It, it could be one or more than one. That how many would lead to faith in Christ this year? So set a number in your head. God himself is all knowing he knows it. So as you set this number, I want to pray for all of you now. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for all my brothers and sisters. You know the numbers they have set in their heads. So Spirit of God, release anointing upon each one. Bless every one of them, Father, I pray. Uh, come and baptize them in the Holy Spirit and your power. And that these brothers and sisters will reach out and share Jesus. And with the joy of leading at least one person to faith in Christ this year. And keep on leading people to faith in Christ every year. So that Myanmar church will never be the same again. So that there will be great rejoicing on earth as great rejoicing in heaven. So fill and empower all my brothers and sisters. And able to press on to share Jesus. Give them the joy of leading people to faith in Christ. So a wonderful celebration in Myanmar Church. A great celebration in heaven, oh God, I pray. So bless all my brothers and sisters. Like the Samaritan woman. They will impact Malaysia. Malaysia they, will impact, they will impact Myanmar. They will impact all the nations of the world. The revival may come, oh God, I pray. The revival may come, oh God, I pray. And in Jesus' mighty name. And in Jesus' mighty name. And in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Give a clap, Jesus. Amen.